We should be broadcasting now. And we will be recording also, so that we'll, we'll have this for later on to add to the newsletter and the website. Let's just see. Okay, so at 6.03, we have people who are still steady coming in from the waiting room. So we will just give them another couple of minutes before we get started. Hello, welcome everyone. We're so happy to be here, to have you here. Uh, and we'll just get started in a few minutes. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for uh, the MBBA's Officer and Director's Installation. I'm Carl Forbes, Jr., President-Elect of the MBBA. Um, we are excited to have you uh, join us today. We, of course, wish that we could do this in person and can't wait until we have the opportunity to be with one another uh, in person. But we are doing the best we can, of course. And so uh, we are looking forward to this evening's festivities. I uh, just want to remind you of our upcoming membership meeting, which is taking place on Monday, the 21st. If you're not a member, please go to our website, mbbanyc.org, for more information. Um, and to become a member or to renew your membership, likewise, uh, during Monday's membership meeting, uh, you'll have the opportunity to join or renew. Our social media hashtags for this evening are MBBA NYC and MBBA LEAP, L-E-A-P, which is also our theme for this bar year. So I have the distinct 
honor this evening of introducing our mistress of ceremonies and officiant, Justice Kennedy. The Honorable Tanya R. Kennedy was appointed this past July as an Associate Justice of the Appellate Division First Department by Governor Andrew M. Cuomo. Justice Kennedy served as a Justice of the Supreme Court in New York County since January 2016 after election in November of 2015. She was elected to civil court in November 2005 and thereafter served in criminal court January 2006 to September 2008, civil court September 2008 to December 2009, Family Court, January 2010 to December 2010. Acting Supreme Court Justice, January 2011 to December 2012. And Supervising Judge of Civil Court, New York County, January 2014 to December 2015. She's also a former adjunct professor at Fordham University School of Law, where she taught a juvenile justice seminar for 10 years. Justice Kennedy is a member of the Board of Directors of the New York City Bar Association and a past chair of the organization's special committee to encourage ju judicial service. She's also an executive committee member of the Women in Law section of the New York State Bar Association, a member of the Committee on Pattern Jury Instructions of the Association of Supreme Court Justices of the State of New York, a member of the Board of Overseers of the Benjamin N. Cardozo School of Law, where she received her law degree, and an advisory board member of Penn State Law. Justice Kennedy is a past board member of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And in addition, she is the past president of the National Association of Women Judges. During Justice Kennedy's term as the NAWJ president, the organization convened cutting edge legal education for the bench, bar and community to address cybersecurity and the internet of things, artificial intelligence, the dark web and virtual currencies e-discovery, bail reform, the opioid crisis, mental wellness, the mention in the courtroom, as well as engaging millennials and building a personal brand. After organizing a legislative caucus on Capitol Hill to focus on ensuring a healthy work environment free of sexual harassment, Justice Kennedy led NAWJ in trademarking hashtag we too in the legal workplace. A frequent speaker, at various conferences, Justice Kennedy has received numerous professional achievement awards. And as you can see from her bio, she truly is well accomplished. Before she takes the floor, we're going to pause uh, for a screenshot as we will do a few times throughout the proceedings uh, in order to document our virtual installation. All right, in three, two, one. Thank you. Once again, join me in welcoming Justice Kennedy, our mistress of ceremonies and officiant. Justice Kennedy, the virtual room is yours. Thank you, Colin. To everyone, good evening. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. And I have to say that more than ever, Black Lives Matter. According to the late Dean Charles Hamilton Houston, he believed that a lawyer was a social engineer who use their knowledge of the law to assist the underprivileged. And I have to say, now more than ever, we need you black lawyers. Look at the devastating effects of COVID-19 on our community. The deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Rashad Brooks, the deaths of so many others, voter suppression, racial animus, the list goes on and on and on. Systemic racism. We need you now more than ever. And I'm just so honored to be your mistress of ceremony and to be a proud member of this organization. It gives me great pleasure to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, who is a portrait of Black excellence as well as that Black girl magic, Sheila S. Boston. Sheila S. Boston is a graduate of Princeton University and Columbia School of Law. She is a litigation partner at Arnold and Porter K. Stoller, LLP. She is a trial lawyer 
and litigation strategist who defends clients from initiation of the case through trial and or settlement, a member of her law firm's product liability group and complex commercial litigation department, Sheila has successfully litigated before both state and federal courts with significant MDL experience in mass tort actions. Sheila has been recognized by who's who legal and product liability defense every year since 2012. In 2018, she was recognized as a legal lion trial attorney by Law 360 as a result of a successful defense verdict in a personal injury case in defense of her pharmaceutical client, Bear, in the Court of Common Pleas of Philadelphia County, Pennsylvania, representing individual pro bono clients as well as big corporations, Sheila has received other recent accolades, including a 2020 Volunteers of Legal Service Award, 2019 New York City Legal Services Honoree Award, 2018 Cranes New York Leading Women's Recognition, 2015 Most Influential Black Lawyers Recognition by Savoy Magazine, and a New York Law Journal's 2014 Lifetime Achievement Award. Notably, in 2007, she was the recipient of the MBBA's Lawyer of the Year Award. Sheila is a member of her firm's pro bono and hiring committees, and she was elected to serve as an ombudsman person for the firm, an active participant in bar associations and the legal community at large. She became the 69th president of the New York City Bar Association in May 2020, an organization comprised of over 25,000 members. Notably, her presidency has historical importance as Sheila is the first woman of color to serve as the organization's president in its 150 year existence. Appointed by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo to serve on New York's first department judicial screening committee, Sheila is finishing her second term in that capacity. She also currently serves as the chair of the Federal Bar Council Board and Vice Chair of DRI's Drug and Medical Device Steering Committee, a passionate advocate of diversity and inclusion in the workplace. Sheila has won several awards for her efforts, including the prestigious Chambers Diversity Award, USA 2016 inaugural award for her outstanding contribution to furthering the advancement of diversity in the legal profession, private practice. Most recently, she was recognized by the New York State Unified Court Systems Black History Month Committee with a 2020 Equality of Justice Award and by Columbia Law School's Black Law Student Association with the 2019 Distinguished Alumni Award. Moreover, she is a life member of the National Bar Association, the Metropolitan Black Bar Association, and the Association of Black Women Attorneys. Having served for six years, Sheila recently left the MBA's Board of Governors and position of chair of the NBA's Minority Partners in Majority Firms Division. I am proud to serve as a member of her board at the City Bar, as well as being a fellow member at the Abyssinian Baptist Church, where she has faithfully served for many years as the church clerk. She's a fabulous person, nice. I'm going off script, I'm back on. Ladies and gentlemen, Sheila Boston. 
Oh, you're about to make me cry. Bless your heart, Jess. I am so excited, by the way, to your elevation. It is just so exciting and so well-deserved. And I thank you so much. And I'm sorry, because I didn't know the bio would be that long. Actually, I should have shortened it even more. But I thank you so much. Y'all know me. I'm just Sheila. Good evening. Good evening, my beloved MBBA family. I pray that on this evening, you are in good spirits and are healthy. Und underline that. Healthy in mind, body, and soul. We're living in super chaotic, surreal, and challenging times. And frankly, that's to put it mildly. The good judge just outlined some of it. But, you know, you know, I just first, though, before I begin, let me take this opportunity not only to thank Justice Kennedy. I'm so thankful that she was the one inter uh, uh, who is introducing me tonight. But I also want to thank my beloved sister, uh, Anta Sese Green, Madam President. You have such a beautiful spirit and you are such a hard worker. And I hope you know that we are just so blessed to have you as a leader in the New York City metropolitan legal community as well as in the black community at large. So I just had to tip my hat off to you. Now, as you and the other soon to be installed officers and directors of the MBBA are about to embark on a new bar year, I thought it might be apropos to share with you what has been frankly one of the winds beneath my proverbial wings as a bar association servant leader that which has been inspiring me and giving me hope and making me get up each and every day, every morning, even if I'm really tired and discouraged. Now, the PK, that is preacher's kid for you, who, those of you who don't know, the PK in me and the church lady, quite frankly, um, would utmost want to proclaim with sincerity, child, if it wasn't for the Lord on my side, I don't know what I would do, okay? <laughs> That's just keeping it real. Um, if I were at Abyssinian with my sister, I might also say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And for me, that is just profoundly true. But I'm cognizant of where I am and that I'm with my MBBA brothers and sisters. And even though the Black church has had a tremendous influence on our community, I know that it's not a part of everyone's practice, culture, tradition, or even spiritual center. And I'm respectful of that fact. I am in this moment in a professional business setting. But as part of being a leader, I'll be honest with you, especially these days, I try to be transparent and I try to be myself, as I hope to lead and encourage many others to do the same. We all have different gifts and talents. Moreover, we are in the midst of such dark times that I'd be remiss if I didn't do for you tonight that which I know I was born to do. And that is simply to encourage and exhort my brothers and sisters this evening. So tonight, I want to charge and encourage our MBBA officers and all of you under the sound of my voice. For each one of you are in the legal community, so you are leaders in your own right, irrespective of whether or not there's a title before or after your name, you are a leader. So many of you know my mantra, it's to whom much is given, much is required. So I wish to encourage. No, I'm, I'm going to use the, the word exhort. It's a churchy term. I know I'm going to exhort you. That's just an emphatic urging for someone to do something. I'm going to exhort you because I want to inspire each of you to take a moment with me at this time to reflect and consider the theme, lest we forget. That's my theme for this evening. If you remember nothing else, remember, lest we forget. Now, you know, that's a phrase which is often used in reference to soldiers and war. And frankly, I'm a U.S. Army brat. I also consider myself a soldier of the Lord. So, you know, I certainly could make the case likening these times, the year 2020, to a time of warfare. And I mean, especially when you think about the great divisions, the proliferation of hatred, police violence against our people, assaults on the rule of law and democracy, a belittling of the press corps, the rejection of facts, science, and evidence in an age of false news. And of course, I cannot fail to mention the penultimate fight in which we are engaged against a virus which is taking out people of color at disproportionate rates. So I think you'd agree with me at the very least that we are in a struggle right now. And you know, I would even deign to say that a lot of us are confused. 
especially, you know, as lawyers who are kind of a little bougie, we've succeeded in attaining a certain stature. Some of us are finding this surreal. We're in utter disbelief. And why? Well, because we have come thus far along the way. We have made some significant progress, hard fought progress. We've had a black president, President Obama. We have black folks who are GCs and corporate companies. Shout out to sister Natalie Lamarck. We have black folk who are state attorneys general. Shout out to sister Letitia James. We have black folk who have been US attorney generals. Shout out to Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch. We have black folk who have been judges on our highest state court, the New York Court of Appeals. A shout out to my brother, Justice Rowan Wilson. But despite these accomplishments, we still have a long way to go. And trying to be a leader in these challenging times, and not just any kind of leader, I'm talking about a strong, good moral leader, trying to be a person of integrity, trying to speak truth to power, trying to promote a clarion call for equal justice under the law, trying to be a person of not just compassion, but also empathy, trying to galvanize the troops or the people, the community, and even those beyond our community to give them, help them give way to their better angels and to engage in coalition building and to reach across aisles to work toward the betterment of our city, society, nation, and even world is definitely, my God, no small task in these days. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been reeling from the amount of selfishness and narcissism we're currently witnessing and experiencing in this country. And ironically enough, I've learned an important lesson, at least for me personally. I found that I have to be a little more self-interested and to engage in just a little more self-care. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's just because you're getting older, Sheila, you know, you need more sleep and all that stuff. But, you know, as one who mentors a lot of young people and junior to mid-level attorneys, I've learned that it is not simply about age. It is instead about a sign of the times. And I've learned that I have to be especially conscious these days of attending not only to the health of my body, but also to my mind and my spirit. I have to engage in self-care, sometimes by not turning on that television or the news media. I find that I have to find some time to just steal away for quiet moments of meditation and breathing and prayer and to reflect, reflect upon the, the priorities in my life as a whole and priorities as a leader in particular. I must take the time to simply replenish myself and power up to fight the good fight for our community in this age of racism, callousness, and utter disrespect for human life, as well as disrespect for this beautiful earth on which we live. That is why mental health and wellness, if you haven't heard before, hear it now. It is one of my six major priorities for the New York City Bar, which I'm calling a bar of hope during my presidency. And I'd contend that mental health and wellness it's a factor which too many of us on this call right now have probably considered to be more of a luxury than a necessity. So this evening, I just wanted to share with you one of my mental health and wellness exercises, if you will. It helps me to not just, not just thrive, but not just survive, excuse me, not just survive, but thrive, amen, in these difficult times. So I'm gonna repeat the words to you again. It's just three words, lest we forget. Now, I consider lest we forget to be a mental exercise that can enhance your mind, your spirit, and your soul. Why is it needed? Well, I once heard a person not too long ago reflecting on the George Floyd killing. She said that Black America is in public mourning right now. Yes, we've been suffering from a type of PTSD as a result of systemic racism in America for a long time, but right now, it's especially front and center and it's on full blast, as my kids would say. So to help us heal and to re-energize us, let us engage in a lest we forget exercise. I'll go first just to show you how it's done. I, Sheila Sabrina Boston, will never forget. As an adolescent, there was an old mother of the church who used to congratulate me on my academic achievements. And she would just, somebody else might be able to relate to this, she would just put this crumpled up Kleenex, quite frankly, in the palm of my hand. But if you opened up that tissue, inside was a dollar or two. And she just hug me, she'd encourage me, and she'd tell me that I will do great things one day. That's what she'd say. She was a part of my village. I am because she was. 
lest I forget. Another one. I'll never forget that my mother taught me how to read before I entered kindergarten. And there was one book that she insisted that I read constantly and often. It was called The Little Engine That Could. I didn't realize it back then, but she made me read it because it had the refrain of, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And it was one of her ways for preparing her little black girl to be strong and excel in a society of systemic racism. My mother taught me important life lessons, lest I forget. Last one. After I was accepted into Princeton University, my father, he bought into a janitorial franchise and he cleaned corporate offices to help me financially pay for my undergraduate education. We're talking about a proud retired army officer and pastor of a church, literally cleaning toilets to invest in my education, but also what he saw as an investment in the black community's future. My father worked hard and he made significant personal sacrifices, lest I forget. Okay, it's your turn. I need all of you just for a minute, just close your eyes. It's just gonna be a minute, close your eyes. And I want you to bring to remembrance one person from your adolescent or teenage years who encouraged you and inspired you to excel and do well in life, but especially in school. Do you see them? Think on how they helped to plant the seed that helped you to grow and become a lawyer, a judge, a law school academic or administrator or law school student. Picture them, remember them fondly, and in your own way, bless them by metaphysically just sending them good vibes or a special message of appreciation. All right, open your eyes again. Thinking about my mother, father, and the church mother gives me strength and encouragement, and I hope your reflection on your special person did the same. Now, those were personal reflections. Let me hasten to go to communal reflections. We as a Black people have an awful lot of history and ancestors upon which to draw. But I'm just going to call a tiny roll, lest we forget. The boldness and heart of Harriet Tubman, who had been an enslaved Black woman on a plantation in Maryland, but escaped and then made some 13 missions to rescue approximately 70 enslaved people, including family and friends, using the network of anti-slavery activists and safe houses known as the Underground Railroad. Y'all, she never lost a passenger. Then 1820, she lived 1820, 1913. Slavery was eventually abolished. We all know this, whether you wanna say it was 1863 or 1865, she played her part, lest we forget. Roll call, the intelligence, courage, legal acumen, and wit of the one and only Thurgood Marshall blessed us with the Brown versus Board of Education legal victory, ending lawful segregation in our schools and becoming the first black Supreme Court justice in 1967. He was certainly impactful and paved the way for all of us here who are now in the profession of law. Bless him, lest we forget. Roll call. The courage and tenacity of those young brothers and sisters who participated in the lunch counter sit-ins and with discipline demonstrated nonviolence while being spat upon, having cigarette butts, hot drinks, racial slurs, and even fists hurled at them. This was in the 1960s. Their civil rights protests helped to end segregation in America. Forget. Roll call. The original March on Washington, August 28, 1963, over a million people in peaceful protest for civil rights, and at which one of the most prophetic voices in our history, that of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he painted a divine picture of and galvanized a country to work toward what we call the beloved community. He died. He was assassinated. Lest we forget. Last one I'll share with you. Bloody Sunday, March 17th, 1965. The march led by our recently departed brother, Congressman John Lewis, in his much younger days from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, serving as a catalyst to the enactment of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, now of course in need of much repair, but he's someone, a giant, who just recently lived among us. He taught us and he urged us to quote, 
get in some good trouble, necessary trouble. John Lewis, lest we forget. What's your point, Sheila? Well, my point is that although things are certainly challenging and we should not diminish the continued struggle of the black community, and though we must acknowledge and attend to the trauma and attacks to our personal, mental health and wellness, we must still remember and not forget that we have been as a people in worse situations throughout history. As a people, we've had much less and done much more, much more in the pursuit for justice and equality in this country. Lest we forget the shoulders of the great men and women before us, our ancestors, we dare not to deign, we dare not deign to give up. And I mean that. We dare not deign to give up. We can't complain too much. We can't complain, but just not too much. We dare not become complacent. And we certainly dare not give in to despair. Because right now, our ancestors, those she rows and he rows, they're peeking over the balconies of heaven. They're watching us with the batons that they handed off to us before their departures. And they are now shouting and cheering us on. They are a cloud of witnesses, my brothers and sisters, and we can't get it twisted. We are currently in the law profession only because of the blood, sweat, and tears of those before us, our ancestors who made a way out of no way. Those who paved the way for us to become law school students, lawyers, judges, politicians, law academicians, and other professional positions, MBBA. We have so much work to do for the black community because we're struggling right now, worse than ever before. So let's get with it. Walk together, children, don't you get weary. And so I say it to you again, my brothers and sisters, when you get down and you're tired, just say to yourself, lest we forget. I thank you so much for the blessing of just being in your presence. It does my heart good to know I'm not alone. And I wish to you and yours good health and body, but also mind and spirit. Congratulations to our MBBA, MBBA officers and directors to come. And may peace be unto all of you, lest we forget. Thank you, and I love you all. Sister Sheila, all I can say is, wow. Thank you for reminding us of the call to action, the charge to keep that we have, lest we forget. I know that each and every one of us, including myself, we can relate. We are here because someone encouraged us. Someone said, you will be a judge. You will be a lawyer. You will be president. And I want to encourage each one of you, don't forget the bridge that brought you over. And what we have to do now is that we have to speak life into our young people. Let them know that they are somebody, that they're destined for success. And we have to be there for them. Because as you said, Sheila, to much whom is given, much is required. And we are truly blessed blessed because we have an education, higher education that not many people have. And in light of this pandemic, we have jobs. That's a double blessing. So because we're blessed, we have to be a blessing to others. So once again, thank you, Sheila. Thank you very much. I'm now gonna ask the board members to activate their Zoom camera so that they can be seen. Do I have everyone? I don't see. The spotlight needs to be canceled. I'm sure the tech people will do that.
All right. I'm now going to uh, announce the board members, classes of 2021, 2022, and 2023. Nicole Arundel, Jomair Crawford, Barbara Graves Pola, Philip Hamilton, Kevin Jordan, Wayne McKenzie, Dawn Reed Green, Asha Smith, Janisha Ty, Calvin Wingfield, Christopher Benz, Eric Cottle, Eric A. Love, Inga O'Neill, and Morland Telford. Would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I state your name. I, I Asha Smith, Landy Telford. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I will support, protect, and defend. I will support, protect, and defend the constitutions of the United States, the constitutions of the United States, the state of New York, the state of New York, the state of New York, and the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And the, and the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. I am duly qualified. I am duly qualified. I'm qualified to hold office. To hold office. To hold office. Under the bylaws, under the bylaws, under the bylaws of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association, of the Metropolitan, of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association, I will faithfully perform the duties of my office. I will faithfully, I will faithfully perform, perform the duties the of my office upon which I am about to enter. Upon which, upon about which I am about to enter. You can put your hands down. Congratulations. You are duly sworn. I think we have to pause for a screenshot. Thank you. Three, two, one. Congratulations. All right. I'm now going to ask that the officers uh, activate their Zoom camera so that they can be seen. We have Paul Forbes Jr., the President-Elect, Malika Fulton, the Vice President of Programs, Justina Rivera, Vice President, Membership, Paula Egger, Treasurer, Chantel Sparks, Secretary, Ariel Allen Stewart, General Counsel, Tanisha McKnight, Vice President, Finance, Tamara Alexander Lynch, Vice President, Communications, and Shad Lovell, Vice President, CLE. Will you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I state your name. I am Shad Lovell. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support, protect, and defend. That uh, I, will I will support, protect, 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 protect and, and, defend. and defend the constitutions of the United States, the, the constitution of the United, of the United States. States, the state of New York, the state, the state, of, New state York. of New York, and the Metropolitan Black Bar Association, and the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. I will faithfully perform the duties. I will faithfully, I will faithfully perform, the perform the duties. Of my office, of, of, my, of my office, office, upon which I am about to enter. Of to which I am about, about to, enter. to enter. You can put your hand down. You are duly sworn. Congratulations. And I think we have to pause for another screenshot. Thank you, Judge Kennedy. All right, you're going to smile. Perfect, thank you. All right. Before I swear in our incoming president, let me tell you a little bit about her. Anta Sese Green is another portrait of Black excellence and Black girl magic. She is Associate General Counsel and Director of Legal Operations at NYU Langone Health 
with primary responsibility for advising the Office of Development and Alumni Affairs on a variety of fundraising and tax-related legal matters, including drafting and negotiating agreements for gifts and bequests, administration of bequests from trust and estates, not-for-profit legal and taxation issues, and general contracting for fundraising events and activities for NYU Langone Hospitals and the NYU School of Medicine. As Director of Legal Operations for NYU Langone, Anta develops and drives the Office of General Counsel's Administrative Priorities, leads key departmental projects, including selection and implementation of technology and efficiency of legal operations. In this new position, and first of its kind at NYU Langone. ANTA works closely with the legal counsel to advise on developments and trends in the use of new technologies to manage internal and external legal services and create service efficiencies, oversee development and implementation of department policies, communications and training, identify appropriate counsel, negotiate and manage key law firm and vendor relationships, including the arrangements and manage the reporting and analysis of legal services and spend as well as internal metrics, develop and own a program focused on the oversight, management and professional development of legal support staff and participate in the development and maintenance of department performance metrics. Anta received her JD from Brooklyn Law School, summa cum laude, and her LLM in tax from NYU School of Law. Immediately prior to joining NYU Langone Health in 2016, she was senior counsel at Aiken, Gump, Struss, Power, and Fell LLP in the firm's private client services section of the tax group, where she advised wealthy individuals on the development of tax efficient vehicles for the transfer of wealth, complex estate and trust administration issues, charitable planning strategies, and the formation and governance of tax exempt organizations. Previously, Anta was an associate with Sullivan and Cromwell LLP and law clerk to the Honorable Lois Bloom, U.S. Magistrate Judge for the Eastern District of New York. She has been awarded various accolades and honors in connection with her work in the legal profession. In addition to being named as an honoree in the Cranes 2019 Notable Women of Law, Anta has been honored by the New York Law Journal as a lawyer who leads by example. She has also been recognized, give me a second, I lost my place, I'm so sorry. I have to do this again, because we wanna do it correctly. That she was an honoree in the Cranes 2019 notable women of law and honored by the New York Law Journal as a lawyer who leads by example in recognition of her many years of commitment to providing pro bono legal services to underrepresented New Yorkers, named to the National Black Lawyers Top 100 Attorneys and as a New York metro area rising star by super lawyer in the area of tax and estate planning. She's also an active member of her community in her role as president for the Metropolitan Black Bar Association, the largest unified citywide association of black lawyers. She's outstanding, she's fabulous. She has such a radiant smile and most of all, just a nice and humble 
person. Madam President, are you ready to be sworn in? Yes, ma'am. All right. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I, unto Cisa Green. Do solemnly <laughs> swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, protect, and defend. That I will support, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitutions of the United States. The State of New York. The State of New York. And the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. And the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. I am duly qualified. I am duly qualified. To hold office. To hold office. Under the bylaws of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. Under the bylaws of the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. I will faithfully perform. I will faithfully perform the duties of my office, the duties of my office, upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. You can put your hand down. You are duly sworn. Congratulations, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you. Judge Kennedy, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for being here and helping us bring in this just amazing panel of officers and directors. Uh, we're always so lucky to have you as a lifetime member, by the way. Uh, Judge Kennedy has, has always been a supporter of the MBBA and of me personally, so thank you so very much. Uh, Sister Sheila, uh, God, um, I was almost in tears. You are absolutely amazing. The energy you gave this morning at 8 a.m. is the same energy that you brought today. We thank you so much for being here, for inspiring us, for encouraging us, and always showing us that Black Girl magic. Um, it is because of people like you, lest we forget, that we are able to do what we do today. I want to congratulate all of the officers and the board of directors. Thank you so much for taking on and serving the Metropolitan Black Bar Association. Uh, some of you have been here, have been directors or officers for many, many years, and your support is not unnoticed. We are so blessed to be able to have you. Congratulations, and I'm excited to be able to work with you guys. Uh, I want to take a minute to also recognize uh, some of the dignitaries who, are, who have joined us virtually. Uh, past MBBA President Taya Grays, uh, thank you, Taya, for everything that you have done. I actually started serving the MBBA uh, when Taya was president. Uh, as you guys, Paula is here, just inducted as our treasurer. She's also a past president of MBBA. Uh, I also want to recognize all of the former MBBA officers and board members who have all joined us today. I want to take them a moment to also recognize uh, some of the judges who are with us currently. If I miss anyone, please forgive me in advance. Uh, you can always just, you know, shoot us a chat so we, we know that you're here. Uh, thank you to, we have Judge Ruth Schillingford, Kings County Supreme Criminal Court, uh, Judge Cheryl Gonzalez, Kings County Housing Court, uh, Honorable Wave Me Toussaint, Brooklyn Appellate Term Justice, uh, Judge Robert Reed, New York County Supreme Court, uh, Judge Kim Adair Wilson, Bronx County Civil Court, uh, Judge Dwayne Paul, Kings County Civil Court, Judge Michelle Sweeting, the New York County Family Court, uh, Judge Priscilla L. Hall, retired second department appellate term, uh, former MBBA member, as well as a current NBA board member. Uh, and also Judge Marguerite Gray's administrative judge of Queens County Civil Court. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I see also uh, Judge Edwina Richardson Mendelson is here, who is Deputy Chief Administrative Judge, Office for Justice Initiatives, and also the Honorable Frias Colon, Judge Civil Court, Kings County. Uh, again, if I forgot anyone, please forgive me. Uh, please make sure you uh, hit us up in the chat so that we know you're here. We welcome you. We appreciate you. Uh, I also want to take a moment to thank all of the bar leaders who are with us today. Darlene Dedios, who is DBA uh, Dominican Bar Association President, Jennifer Taiwo, President of the Association of Black Women Attorneys, uh, Miguelina Camilo, who is a Bronx Women's Bar Association President, 
Um, thank you all for being with us. It is such an honor to, to have all of you here with us and also to be able to, to know that we can always reach out to all of you, uh, you know, to, to partner, to collaborate. Uh, I also want to recognize, my apologies, uh, Rodney Pepe Souvenir, who is uh, president of Halani, Haitian Lawyers Association of New York, uh, as well as Natoya McKee, president of the Brooklyn Women's Bar Association. I also extend my thanks to all of our partners, our collaborators, our supporters, and especially our members. Uh, we do what we do because of you. Uh, and as you know, Judge Kennedy has said, as Sheila has said, right, um, we are here to help one another, right? We stand on the shoulders of giants and we want to be able to make them proud. Uh, the installation is, you know, one of our favorite events during the year. This is the first time that we've done it virtually. I, I don't know quite how the oath worked right there, but <laughs> we made it happen and we got through it. Uh, so I, I, am, I am not a PK, not a preacher's kid. Uh, but I do want to just take a couple of moments to just talk to you about why I became involved with MBBA and why I'm honored right now to be president of such an amazing bar association in such an incredible time, right? Um, it's interesting that Sheila was talking to us about remembering the person who motivated you, who encouraged you, right, when you were an adolescent teenager. Uh, I remember that person, right? It was Mrs. Oaken, she's long past, and she introduced me to music. And music is my meditation music, you know, makes me get up, helps me push through, helps me cry when I, you know, need to just refresh and get the tears out. Uh, but then in fifth grade, right, Mrs. Oaken was third grade, introduced me to music, great. But then in fifth grade is sort of when everything sort of blew up, right? That little black girl who was so encouraged, so enthusiastic, who really wanted to go out there and learn. And I, I was the one who, you know, did her homework on the playground, right? Um, but I had a teacher who told me it was unacceptable. Not only was it unacceptable for me to do homework when I wanted to do homework or to read or to do anything academic that I wanted to do, but she told me that a black girl like me, my name that she pinned for me, that the whole class took on was Blackie. Right, I was the ugly little black girl that would not succeed. And it took me a very long time, right? And it's interesting because just yesterday, I, I started the very first session with a career coach and she wanted me to talk about me. And it's something that I don't do often, right? I talk about my family, I talk about my friends, I talk about work, what I have to do for them. And as we all do, right, I put myself last. And my coach, it was, a, it was a very trying hour and a half, I will tell you, uh, because talking about me wasn't something that I did. But talking about me helped me realize, right, that that self-care that Sister Sheila was talking about, right, I'm very delinquent. I, I will admit that. But that is one of the reasons why MBBA is so special, right? It, it took me a very long time, right, to get that, that blackie out of my brain, right, to teach myself that I was worthwhile, that I was good, right, that I could succeed. And it was because all along the way, there was at least one person, right, and, and it always takes one person, right, just to get you a step closer. There's that one person in every stage that helps you. And it wasn't until I got to law school that I didn't just have one person. I had a group of people, black lawyers who I didn't even know. I knew Blair Underwood was a black lawyer, right? That was about it, right? All fictional to me. But black lawyers, black law students who embraced me, who advised me on what I needed to do, what I could do, how special I was. And that's why MBBA. As Sheila said, we are, we are an amazing group. We are a powerful group. And when we get together and we work together and we lift each other up, we can do so many things. And that's why my theme or my Bible for my two year tenure is leap, right? Leap into excellence and amplify the power of the black bar. Because when we come together, we do amazing things. And especially at a time right now, right? We're, we're all still indoors. Some of us are going back to work physically, right? And even if you do, you're locking yourself in your office and not really seeing anybody, right? Uh, some, of, some of us have children who have gone back to school virtually or in person. 
and we are dealing with a lot and self-care is even more important, but the support is even more important. And that's why we not only need your support, but we wanna make sure you understand that we are here for you. It's the black legal profession, right, that has the power. So that means all of the attorneys, the paralegals, the legal assistants, legal analysts, whatever that title is, the diversity and inclusion and equity officers, it is all of you. And let me not forget the law students. It's all of you coming together that help us form this powerful black bar that can do anything. We can leap, and I say leap because it's, it's, it's past time for us to walk, right? It's past time for, for us to run. We are beyond the walking and the running. We are in a moment where we can jump as high as we want and need to in order to make things happen. And MBVA has been there for more than 37 years, helping us to leap, to walk, to run, and now is the time for us to be able to leap. So what does that mean? It means we need to lead, we need to engage, we need to advocate, and we need to partner, right? And we need to do it together. We need your help. We can't do everything alone. We are the officers and the board of directors. While we do the day-to-day, -day, we do it so that we can be there for you. So we need your voice and we need you to help us lead. We are very proud to have new leaders that we appointed just recently to be chairs, vice chairs, and also secretaries of our divisions, right? One of the things that we have been able to do as a board in this short amount of time, we have completely revised our divisions and our sections so that we can provide you with the information that you need. But we are always looking for leaders. And a leader doesn't have to be someone who takes on a chair position. You can speak, you can send us an idea, you can send us names of people who want to speak, who are experts, right? That is a way for you to lead. And most importantly, promote us. Talk about the MBBA. Talk about your experience with MBBA, right? We need to engage. We can't help you, we can't support you unless we know what you need and how you are doing. Right, because we all know sometimes it's just, you just need a voice, right? You just need someone to listen to. You need some advice, right? We are here to help you engage with one another and also to help you engage with us, but more importantly, to engage with the legal profession so that we can make the change that we need to, so that we don't have to worry about being the only in a room, right? So we don't have to worry about being that 5% right, where we are still almost non-existent as law firm partners, equity partners, GCs, deputy GCs. We are about change. We are about pushing each other. So we need to engage with each other to make things happen and advocate, right? So advocate means ad not just advocating for the Black legal community so that they know their rights, so they can stand up for one another, so they can support one another, but also advocating for each other in any scenario. And lastly, partnership. I mean, partnership is the crux of everything that we do. It really is. And we, we want partnerships with all of you, with your law firms, with your financial institutions, with your law schools, with your solo firms, right? There are so many small and solo black attorneys, right? We are here to help you. Tell us what you need. How can we support you? So leaping into excellence is something that we can do to make everyone's life just a little bit easier, right? And that little black girl who used to sit in the corner and cry and wonder if, you know, she would ever go back to school or if she would even graduate high school because fifth grade was totally out. That little black girl has very slowly started to disappear. She'll always be in me, right? But it's because of these officers, these board members, the Sheila Bostons, the Judge Kennedys. It's because of you that I was able to shed that. And I've learned from it. And I want to make sure that especially those law students, law students, if you're out there, we know it's hard. We know it is very, very hard right now. All right, those, those of you, those are the, the attorneys who graduated in 2008, 2009 during the financial crisis, we, we understand your pain, right? Because it, it's, it's very, very similar. So we are here for you. And what we hope to do is to really engage you. So we have made law student membership free. 
So if you haven't signed up, I don't know what you're waiting for. www.mbbanyc.org. Law student membership is free. And we have an amazing group of leaders for our pre-law and law student division who are doing some great things, not just reaching out to you to make sure that you have what you need, but also working with your school, your diversity and inclusion uh, officers at your law schools, your career services to get you what you need, because this is a very difficult time. So we want to make sure that you are there. We want to make sure that we are supporting you. And in order to do that, we need to know that you exist. So if you're a law student, there's no reason why you should not be a member of the MBBA. So please sign up. And I also encourage our diversity and inclusion officers, our paralegals, our legal assistants, whatever your title is, if you are a black individual in the legal profession, this is the place to be. Come to us, work with us, talk to us so that we can make the change that we need to make so that we can leap into excellence and amplify the power of this black bar. Thank you to everyone for being here. It has been amazing. I really wish we could do this, you know, in person. Um, as Carl had, had mentioned, next Monday is our first membership meeting. And there we will be able to talk very closely talk a little bit more about what we have been able to do, what we are doing in the future, and also introduce you to all of our new leaders, our chairs and our vice chairs, which we are so happy to have all of them here. So we hope you will join us next Monday. We also will be participating in the virtual African American Day Parade, which is uh, this, this Saturday, as a matter of fact. Uh, so I'm sorry, Sunday. It's Sunday the 20th, the virtual African American Day Parade. So we hope that you will join us. And we will also be launching, as you guys know, we had to cancel our gala. We originally postponed it to September, but as you can see, large gatherings are not happening. So we will still be honoring and acknowledging all of our gala honorees. We will be having fireside chats with our honorees. Um, if, you, if you forgot our honorees are uh, Judge Carol Sharp, who's a supervising judge, New York Civil Court, Breon Peace, who was a partner at Cleary, uh, Zachary Carter, who um, is a former corp counsel in New York, uh, Peter Wilson, who is a diversity and inclusion officer at Proscow Rose, and then we also have Lori Robinson Hayden, uh, who is a uh, founder of CCWC, and Tony West, GC of Uber. Uh, for those of you who need it, we will also be having uh, a couple of CLEs for diversity and inclusion, and we know you all need it and can use it. So uh, come and join us, please. Uh, we put a link to our, our uh, calendar so that you can see everything that is happening, but we really hope that you will join us. One, become a member, and two, join us at the membership meeting this coming Monday uh, to see everything that we are doing and that we have planned for the rest of this bar year. Thank you again for everything. And we hope that you all have a blessed evening and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thank you, everyone. I'm gonna unmute so everybody can say bye. See you Thank you for sharing. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you. Congratulations. Hang in there, y'all, lest we forget. Thank you. Yes, Sheila. Thank <laughs> you.